Hey folks, yeah, it's windy as the dickens, but the other day when I made the video about this little cart, wagon, trailer, whatever you want to call it, kayak trailer, paddleboard trailer, garden cart, bike trailer, anyways, I mentioned the seat post hitch, but I didn't show you how I made it. So I wanted to go ahead and do that, but I have it out here in the driveway first just to show you how versatile this thing is. This, it's, it acts like a universal joint. Anyone who saw my book on how I build that canoe, my making a ripple, the canoe, the two by four canoe, I had a, I used this seat post hitch, but I had a spring in a piece of three quarter inch conduit. Well, that spring is entirely unnecessary. In fact, it, it makes it worse. So a person can lean on this, lean over while you're riding and turn, you know, past 90 degrees with the bike tilted. So it's entirely mobile in all directions. Just using this buck and a half piece. So let's head up into the workshop and I'll show you how I make it. This is the crucial part. This is a half inch standard duty thimble that you find in the rope and cable section of your like fleet supply store. You need the half inch one. It's shaped like a horse collar and it has these little ears on the ends, these little, these little uh, wings off the end here that we need to lop off. So we're going to do that and then we need to drill holes for the pin and they need to be in the proper position. We want them far enough back from the end so that there's enough metal that it's you know, sturdy enough, but we don't want it so far back that there's not enough metal on the hitch part on the tongue. So I'm setting, I'm going to drill an eighth inch pilot hole back about three eighths of an inch from the, from the end here. And so I just took a marker and marked that. And then I'm going to take the angle grinder and we're going to lop off these ears and we'll go from there. So I just want to get get rid of any sharp edges here. You know, it doesn't need to be perfect. I don't want to do too much more grinding in here. I got a little bit of clutter on my workbench here. I don't know, some of you might have even more tidy workshops than I have. Probably not terribly wise to be grinding metal right here, sending sparks flying all over my my workbench. But that's good enough. Let's drill some holes. So before I lopped off those ears of, on the end, I marked back three eighths of an inch on each side with a permanent marker. Yeah that'll focus and so I'm just going to take an eighth inch drill bit and drill a pilot hole first on each side and then we'll widen them out with a quarter inch bit so I drilled an eighth inch hole at my marks on each side so now I'm going to just widen them out with the quarter inch bit I have the quarter inch holes on each side drilled through and now I'm going to run that bit through both of them. I'll put this back in the vise and that way it'll be a nice channel for that pin to travel through.
This might involve a little bit more reaming out or cleaning out that that channel so that that pin will travel through easily once we spread this out if we have to spread it a little bit depending on what size of a seat post that we have. But we have our holes drilled and we have enough metal that I'm comfortable enough, enough metal between the, the outside edge of the hole and the, and the top of our, our thimble here. A little dressing of those holes with, the, with a round file might be in order. Uh, seat posts are highly variable and that's part of the, the, the challenge to making the spacers to slide over the seat post is that some of them, like my bikes out there, the one inch electrical conduit, just one inch plastic PVC conduit that I use as spacers slid nicely over those seat posts. Well, here's a, here's one off a Trek bike and that's, <laughs> That's almost the outside diameter of this. So what I had to do is I cut a slit in it on the bandsaw. And if I was to use this seat post, I would have to widen that out. Now, you don't want to do this by hand. So I would take a screwdriver and put it in that slit and then you can you can turn turn the blade of the screwdriver to open it and then you can get it to slide over a super wide seat post like that found on this trek bike like that and then you're going to have basically a quarter inch space there but we're not using this one so that's not going to be that's kind of an extreme example so i took the, the seat off our daughter's bike because she's not home and you can see with her seat post i still need to have that little slit to get this conduit to slide over but with that slit, it just opens like a 32nd of an inch or less, and it slides freely over. So I'm going to have to cut a second piece, and I'm going to use this smaller bandsaw. That's a lot tamer than, than this, uh, where is it? That big one there, bigger, bigger one. So I'm just going to cut another piece and it's going to be determined by where you want your hitch in relation to the height of your seat post and the height of your rear tire and all. So this is going to be all dependent on the type of bike that you have. So I'm just going to cut off a piece. Try to cut it as square as possible. And, you know, these dang bandsaws are nothing to mess around with either. That's why they use them in butcher shops. They cut so freely right through flesh and bone and everything else. So the next step then, the reason I'm using this smaller bandsaw is that this step here is kind of the death-defying part where we're going to cut that slot, that slit. Now because the hitch that I made for my new trailer is this metal stock and I'd, I'd said in the video that it was eighth inch it's actually three sixteenths by three quarter inch but that's the part that'll have a hole drilled through it that will the pin will go through that will secure it to this thimble now you can see I have to widen that thimble just a bit so we're just going to stick it back in the vise here 
and we only need to widen it just enough so that that our hitch will slide freely in there and then we just have to be sure that we didn't widen it so much that our holes are no longer even so that the pin will slide evenly through there. So this is what we'll have. We'll have a top collar. Then we'll have our, our hitch. And then we'll have a, a lower one. And then part of the beauty of these things is that they're rounded. You know, that horse collar shape, they're, they're rounded so they don't bind at all on that on that flat surface of the that so that's all set to put back on the bike so i don't know tick, how tickled sarah's going to be to find that she's got a a trailer hitch on her bike now see how that pin yeah that slides nicely through the hole so that thing's all set to go With binding a little bit, you can raise that seat up just a little bit. And again, the spacers are going to be determined by how high you want your seat, how high you want your tongue of your trailer above the tire, because we really don't want it rubbing on that. But that's it. So there you have it. A seat post hitch that costs between the, the cost of the thimble and the inch and a half by a quarter inch pin, about three bucks. I don't know why you'd pay more for a hitch that works so darn well. It's worked perfectly for us for years and years. So I just wanted to share it and hope it works for you. So until next time, it's Mark again with Backwood Basics, and let's uh, let's let's come up with stuff that helps each other grow together. <laughs>